Yeah. So typically for a small business owner to get true business changing education, they're looking at spending in the range of at least $1,500 to $4,000 a month for for high ticket coaches like myself and others. <clears throat> and for many businesses, that is just not feasible. And for a lot of businesses, it's just that they don't believe it's feasible. But if we can't get over that hump and we can't help them like learn how to scale, how to work less in the business and work more on the business, then then they're going to fail. And and that's what the statistics tell us. I mean, 20 percent of small business owners fail in the first year, 30 percent by year three, 50 percent by year five and 70 percent by year 10 fail. And each failure for a small business owner is not just about, you know, reputation. It's often they've put their 401ks into starting the business. They put their entire life savings into starting the business. They've missed their young children growing up because they've been working in the business. Um, Entrepreneurs have one of the highest divorce rates of any profession and honestly, a lot of these failed small businesses also result in suicide. And so all of those things can be prevented if we get the education to people so that they aren't making the mistakes that are taking them down the road of failure. Yeah, and I see it with younger younger people. I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm 40 something getting closer to my higher 40s. And I have kids that are younger and they're talking about passive income or owning their own business. And, you know, as an older person, all those things you said about which you brought even more data than I was aware of is I'm sitting here as an older person saying, hmm, starting your own business, building your own business. It's not for the faint of heart. I agree. In <laughs> fact, I would say that the number one, um, the number one skill you need to have as a small business owner is risk tolerance and resilience. Um, I think, well, I guess that's two skills, but they go hand in hand. And that is something that our younger generation is actually lacking in. Uh, they're lacking in the resilience of the older ge- generations. And it's coming from a place of, um, it's really coming from a good place. You know, of course, the, the people now who are parents, they want to provide more for their children than they had, and they want to do more for their children. But what we're seeing is that there is a lack of resilience. There is a lack of um, being able to overcome challenges sometimes because, I mean, this isn't true across the board, of course, but, but we're seeing that in schools. I mean, they just dropped the grading scales in schools. When I was in school to get an A, I had to have a 95. I mean, I went to a private school, so it was different than the public school, but I had a 95 or above to get an A. And now in schools, one of my clients, she owns a Learning RX franchise, and that helps people, uh, helps children who are um, delayed in their reading abilities. It helps it get up. up to, she told me that in her school district, what was formerly a C is now an A. Wow. So so what we're doing is we're taking away obstacles for children. And when we take away obstacles, they don't learn how to overcome those obstacles. Well, now what we have is a generation that's coming up that has less resilience and less ability to overcome challenges. And in business, that's all you have as a business owner is challenge after challenge <laughs> after challenge. And so um, so we have to re-educate and, and help people really understand how to overcome those challenges. It's almost a little bit fearful, as you referenced earlier, the American dream, you know, start your own business, run your own business. I think 20 years down the road of where we may not have a lot of small businesses getting started. I, I <laughs> agree with that. Um, or our failure rates are going to increase. Right. Um, so that's the question is, how do we how do we reverse this or how do we help increase the success rates. And that's our goal with Secret Mm. Sauce, is to ultimately see a change in the statistics and lower the rates of failure. And when you think about 
I think some things you talked about, and we've had other people on the the podcast with their episodes, is business owners are typically really great and passionate in one area, yet it takes so many other skill sets and knowledge base to run a business successfully and grow and scale. What is it that's missing? Or what is it if you were to talk to a business owner, somebody thinking about starting their business, here are the first few things you really need to be set up for and have down pat to give yourself as high of a success rate as possible to beat all those stats you you talked about. Yeah, the the thing is, I don't believe there is one or two specific things. It's a real, it's a holistic view. You have to you have to wear every hat when you're a business owner, especially when you're starting out. Now, as you grow in scale, that gives you the ability to start bringing on team members and surround yourself with experts in the things that are your weaknesses, right? <clears throat> but to start out, um, the number one piece of advice I would give to anybody who wants to start a business is there's no shame in not doing it alone. I think that that is one of the things that that really hamstrings people because most people are starting a business after having been employed for someone else. And they've been frustrated in that employment, right? It's like, oh, like I have all these great ideas of ways we could be more productive or we could do X and do Y and do Z and my boss won't, it says no to all of them. If I was the boss, I would say yes to my ideas and then, you know, I, I would be able to serve customers better. So that's one reason, uh, you know, that people um, start a business. So, so then when they start a business, it feels like if I'm the business owner, then I'm the one who has to make all the decisions and I'm the one who needs to know what they're doing. And it's not my business if I'm, you know, have a team of people or, or have an expert or a mentor or somebody else telling me what to do. That's just another boss. And I don't even think that these are conscious thoughts, but but I believe that there's such an independence that comes with claiming I'm a business owner and that's what people are craving that they dive in and start down the road all alone. And it's about a year to 18 months in when they realize that they've exhausted everything that they know how to do and they're still stuck. And by stuck, what I mean is that they feel like they're on a hamster wheel. They're usually working more hours than they did when they were working for someone else. And they're generally making less money than they did when they were working for somebody else. And they can't see the pathway to change that because they've They've done everything they know how to do. And now they're sitting in that void of, I don't know what I don't know. And that's that's a scary place to be because you don't even know what question to ask. Mm -hmm. And so if we could just change that and say, no, 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 no. The very first thing you need to do is you need to lock arms with an expert, not, you know, this needs to be an expert. What is an expert versus a business coach or a business you know, mentor. Well, an expert has the proven track record, right? Have they done it themselves? Have they been a business owner? What type of business did they own, right? It's very different to be an influencer as a business than to open a storefront business in your local community. Those are two different things. So, um, so you need to find someone and invest in, invest in yourself first before you invest in a business. When you invest in working with an expert so that you can increase your business intelligence, that is going to pay off as you invest in your business and help accelerate you towards success. 